This is the Music History Today podcast for June 26th. On today's show, Elvis performs for the final time, President Obama sings, and David Lee Roth returns. First up, though, on this date in 1937, band leader Charles Rogers married silent film star Mary Pickford. In 1963, John Lennon and Paul McCartney wrote the song She Loves You. In 1975, Sonny and Cher finalized their divorce. In 1976, Bob Seger headlined his first stadium tour. In 1977, Elvis Presley gave his last ever concert. It was in Indianapolis, Indiana. We go more into this on the Music History Today in-depth podcast, which has dropped by the time you're actually hearing this. In 1979, the Village People became the first disco group to hold a concert at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Also in 1979, Nigel Olsen was involved in a fatal car accident. In 1982, singer Marie Osmond married her college classmate, Steve Craig. In 1984, Barbara Streisand started recording the song, Here We Are at Last. In 1984, same day, singer Tiny Tim married his wife, Jan Alwies. In 1988, Debbie Gibson graduated from high school a day after her song, Foolish Beat, hit number one on the Billboard singles chart. In 1992, Shakespeare's sister headlined England's Glastonbury Music Festival. In 1996, David Lee Roth came back as lead singer of Van Halen. Again. And again. In 1998, Blur headlined England's Glastonbury Music Festival. In 2005, Pink proposed to motocross racer Carrie Hart while Carrie was actually in the middle of a race. He said yes after the race was over. Also in 2005, the group The Double X formed. In 2010, concert producer Simone Sestito married actress Mena Suvari. Also in 2010, a then-unsigned Gary Clark Jr. performed at the Crossroads Guitar Festival. The performance led to him getting a record contract. In 2012, the group JTR was formed. In 2013, Mumford & Sons headlined England's Glastonbury Music Festival. In 2015, Florence and the Machine headlined England's Glastonbury Music Festival, becoming the first female-fronted band to headline Glastonbury in 23 years. Also in 2015, President Barack Obama sang Amazing Grace at the funeral service for the Reverend Clementa Pinckney, who was murdered in a mass shooting in the Reverend's church by a white nationalist. In 2019, the Killers headlined England's Glastonbury Music Festival. It was the last official Glastonbury Music Festival until 2022, as COVID lockdowns forced the festival's cancellation in 2020 and 2021. And in 2020, Bob Dylan hit number one on the British Albums chart with the album Rough and Rowdy Ways, making 79-year-old Dylan at the time the oldest person to ever have a number one album in Great Britain. In classical music in 1870, Wagner premiered his opera Valkyrie, which had the ride of the Valkyries. You probably were exposed to the piece as a young kid, and you probably know it as the song Kill the Wabbit from the Bugs Bunny cartoon opera version of Ride of the Valkyries in the cartoon short What's Opera Doc? I actually think that's how almost every kid learned about opera was from that one cartoon. God bless Looney Tunes. Also, in 1912, Gustav Mahler premiered its Ninth Symphony. In theater, in 1924, the musical Ziegfeld Follies of 1924 opened on Broadway. In 1971, the musical Man of La Mancha closed on Broadway. In 1973, the London edition of the musical Grease premiered in London. In 1991, the Broadway show Getting Married opened. And in 2021, Bruce Springsteen's Springsteen on Broadway show became one of the first Broadway shows to reopen since COVID lockdown shut down Broadway in March of 2020. In award ceremonies that were held on June 26th, 
In 2018, Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees was knighted by Prince Charles. Now, of course, King Charles. Albums that were released on June 26th include in 1961 when the Venturers released their self-titled album. In 1964, due to a radio station playing the album way too soon before they were supposed to, the Beatles had to release A Hard Day's Night way ahead of time. In 1967, the Rolling Stones released Flowers. In 1970, Free released Fire and Water. In 1974, Bad Company released their self-titled album. In 1975, Bob Dylan and the band's Basement Tapes, the bootlegged album, was finally released officially after years of being a bootleg. In 1976, Trooper released Two for the Show and The Grateful Dead released Steal Your Face. In 1979, Queen released Queen's Live Killers. In 1984, Ice House released Sidewalk. In 1987, Roseanne Cash released King's Record Shop. In 1989, Bad English released their self-titled album. In 1990, Cameo released Real Men Wear Black. And Sonic Youth released their influential indie album, Goo. In 1995, The Chemical Brothers released Exit Planet Dust and Dire Straits released Live at the BBC. In 2000, Badly Drawn Boy released The Hour of Bewilderbeast. In 2001, Lou Reed released American Poet. In 2002, Bobby Patterson released How Do You Spell Love? The Paula Recordings, 1971 to 1973. In 2003, Simple Minds released Early Gold. And in 2007, Nick Lowe released At My Age. Pearl Jam released Pearl Jam Live at the Gorge, 0506, and Paul Simon released the essential Paul Simon. Singles that were released on June 26th include in 1976 when Peter Frampton released the live version of Baby I Love Your Way from Frampton Comes Alive. In 1979, The Clash released Gates of the West. In 1982, The Go-Go's released Vacation All I Ever Wanted. In 1990, Madonna released Hanky Panky off of the Dick Tracy soundtrack. And in 2000, Metallica released I Disappear. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on June 26th include bassist Colin Greenwood of Radiohead, bassist Reggie Workman, blues musician Big Bill Brunzi, Colonel Tom Parker, who is Elvis Presley's manager, composer Ken Mool, country music singer Gretchen Wilson, Drummer Joey Barron, drummer Mark DeClote of EMF, drummer Stewie Spear, fiddler Kenny Baker, guitarist and singer Mick Jones of The Clash, guitarist Steph Burns of Huey Lewis and the News, Harriet Wheeler of The Sundays, jazz percussionist Brian Abrahams of Sean Lee and also District 6, Jordan Fish of Bring Me the Horizon, label owner and producer Irv Gotti. Nathan Followell of Kings of Leon, pianist Dave Gruesome, pianist Eugene Cicero, rapper Noriel, rapper Smokey Magila, reggae singer Wayne Wonder, Rinsey Ross of Quarterflash, saxophonist Don Lamphere, session musician Larry Taylor, singer Ariana Grande, singer Billy Davis Jr. of The Fifth Dimension, Singer Brenda Holloway, singer Casey Desmond, singer Chiquis, singer Chris Isaac, singer Kuko, singer Indila, singer Patty Smythe of the group Scandal, singer Ryan Tedder of One Republic, singer-songwriter Georgie Fame, singer Teddy Grace, 
singer Terry Nunn of the group Berlin, and trumpet player Jimmy Dochar. Artists who unfortunately passed away on June 26 include composer Tobias Michael, who passed away in 1657 at the age of 65. Organist Lazaro Valvicensi passed away in 1661 at the age of 76. Composer Angelo Caroli passed away in 1778 at the age of 77. Composer Eugene Gota Charlie passed away in 1798 at the age of 56. Composer Johann Stadler passed away in 1819 at the age of 71. Composer Claude Joseph Roger de Lisley passed away in 1836 at the age of 76. Composer Alexander Muir passed away in 1906 at the age of 76. Song lyricist, civil rights activist, and poet John Weldon Johnson passed away in a car accident in 1938 at the age of 67. Conductor Erno Rapi passed away in 1945 at the age of 54. Also, composer Nikolai Cherepinin passed away in 1945 at the age of 72. Jazz trumpet player Clifford Brown passed away in 1956 at the age of 25. Composer Guillermo Holguin passed away in 1971 at the age of 91. On that same day, opera singer Inya Tewita passed away at 56. And composer Juan Manin passed away at the age of 88. Composer Arnold Richardson passed away in 1973 at the age of 59. Producer Lou Reisner passed away from cancer in 1977 at the age of 43. Composer Peter Kruder passed away in 1981 at the age of 75. Pianist Andrei Tchaikovsky passed away in 1982 at the age of 46. Songwriter Walter O'Keefe passed away in 1983 at the age of 82. Opera composer Hank Battings passed away in 1987 at the age of 80. Organist Thomas Armstrong passed away in 1994 at the age of 96. Hawaiian singer Israel Kama Kawiwol passed away from respiratory failure in 1997 at the age of 38. Singer and actress Dolores Gray passed away in 2002 at the age of 78. Singer-songwriter Naomi Shamer passed away in 2004 at the age of 74. Composer and also conductor of the Stockholm University Chorus from 1959 to 1984 and also the artistic director of the Royal Swedish Opera from 1987 to 1996, Iskiel Hemberg passed away in 2004 at the age of 66. Banda leader Sergio Vega passed away in 2010 at the age of 41. Violinist and also the conductor of the Rockland Symphony from 1962 to 2017, Edward Simons passed away in 2018 at the age of 101. And yes, you heard that right. The guy was actually conducting at the age of 100. God bless him. Pianist Eugene Alcalay passed away in 2019 from heart issues at the age of 52. Pianist and composer Frederick Zuski passed away in 2021 at the age of 83. Singer-songwriter Johnny Solinger of Skid Row passed away in 2021 from liver failure at the age of 55. And composer John Hassel passed away in 2021 at the age of 84. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is June 27th when, in 1968, Elvis comes back again. 